back in eighth place. And here's who's ahead of him. Holmes, C.J. Stroud, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Hurts, Love, Rogers, and he's tied with Dak Purdy and Jared Goff. He is so much thinner. Look at that. He's, he's down to 200. He's out dance. there looking like James. Jameis Jameis says he's down to 200. <laughs> he's not down to 200, yeah. So, uh, do you think he can win back-to-back -back MVPs? With I don't. Uh, I mean, it's possible, of course, but – I think, and I'm, the main reason I say no is I, voter fatigue. Like, voter fatigue is real. And he, th it's happened five times where guys have won back-to-back -back MVPs. Mm -hmm. Most of them, Aaron Rodgers had already won a Super Bowl. Uh, Brett Favre won, you know, he won three <coughs> straight. He won his, um, it, the back-to-back -back MVPs mm -hmm. in the second year. And that was a Super Bowl. He won yep. his second year of the MVP run. Jim Brown was just, you know, kind of pre-modern football. Um, Peyton Manning did it. But there's one – I can't even read Peyton my Manning writing. did it twice. So 3 to 4 and 0 8 no, Montana. But okay. Montana had a I Super know, Bowl. I know because Coach has a graphic of it that yeah. I'm looking at. Yeah. Montana <laughs> had a Super Bowl but yeah. before he – my point is this. If you win multiple MVPs – Voter fatigue is real, but it's even more real when you haven't done well in the playoffs. Yes. And haven't won a Super Bowl. And that's why I say all these guys that won back-to-back -back had already won a Super Bowl, except Peyton Manning, all right? Yeah. But he, he won his Super Bowl after that. But he didn't win three. He didn't until win his third he until he had won a Super Bowl. Yeah. So now I think people are looking at Lamar like, yeah, it, it, you're awesome in the regular season. But kind of until you get it done in the postseason, even just play well. You don't yeah. necessarily have to win the Super Bowl yet, but play well, I think that's going to affect the voters. I think his he would have to have such an incredible individual season. They would have to probably have the best record in the and league. Two. And then no one else would have, you know, like last yeah. year, nobody had like a historically great season. So that would have to be the case too. Yeah, and you talked about the, the different guys that won multiple ones. So why don't we bring up the graphic because there are typically a, a significant amount of years between the times that there are back-to-back -back winners. So you saw Jim Brown and then the, the huge gap between him and Montana. And then there's a, a fairly significant gap between Montana and Favre. Now Peyton won it with only a four-year stretch, but now if it went from Rodgers to, to Lamar, it would be the shortest amount of time between a back-to-back -back MVP. Not only that, look, look at the numbers in these back-to-back -back years yeah, versus wild. what Lamar did last year. So these are two years. These are the combined uh, yep. MVP years. I, the Rodgers numbers are, are staggering: 85 touchdowns, nine interceptions. So Lamar now was 24 and seven last year. It it, it would it would have to be really a special touchdowns. special <laughs> season. Yeah, they, they, there's. There's a huge gap in where Lamar was last year winning the MVP, and I know stylistically he's very different than any of the quarterbacks that are he up on that board. He could be in line maybe with Peyton's 08-09. Not in yards, but he could get to, you know what I mean, if he had 35 touchdowns, he was going to have way fewer picks and a better rate. Which his first MVP year was closer to those yes. numbers. Right. But, but it's been a long time since he's hit any, any numbers like that. Do you think it's weird... We talked about this with um, Russell Westbrook when he won the MVP for triple double all year, and they did it again. It's like, eh. Yeah. Right. Right. But the right. argument was like, I got the MVP for doing this, and now I'm doing it multiple times, and you guys are kind of ignoring right. me. If he puts up, excuse me, better numbers this year, and the Ravens are just as good, and like you said, nobody pops, would he no, get your. I, I know we don't no, have votes. I, listen, here, I, I know everyone still to this day holds this against me when it comes to the Jokic stuff. But the MVP in any sport is not a single season vacuumed regular season award. It just isn't. All of history tells us it isn't. All of our, our intuition right. tells us it isn't. And if you're if Lamar Jackson had won the AFC championship game and they'd won the Super Bowl, the answer to this question would be yes. Yeah. Because he didn't, the answer is no. I understand that by the bylaws, by the rules, if you ask a voter, they'll say, oh, of course, that has nothing to do with it. That's just not how human beings work. And they are, and Brew actually has a vote for the NBA and I think agrees with me yeah. on this. Like, there are, what, it is, the easiest MVP to win is your first one. It's hard to win your second one, and, and there's cross sports. To win a third, you gotta you've got to be a legend and a champion. Yep. And to win a fourth, we've got to be saying, wait, 
is this guy the best I've ever seen, or at least in that room of discussion? That's how it works. Yeah. And so I don't, I don't think that is unfair. The reason I don't think that's unfair is to a point Bruce made for a long time. It's how we've always right. done it. Precedent. If the precedent is if it's unfair to Lamar, it's actually fair because it's the same level of unfairness everyone else has dealt with. Mm -hmm. And so that, that for Lamar, in my opinion, will not win another MVP until he gets to a Super Bowl or we are – five, six years since his last MVP, and he has a great season. You know yeah. what I mean? If it's been a long time. What? That's just how it works. I agree with everything you said, except let me ask you this. If he I, – I don't think he'll win it. But if he has a phenomenal individual season and they go 14-3, and three, they number one seed in the AFC. I honestly think they win the night. Like You don't think that's one. possible? I honestly think they – because we, we've seen that. He did his first year as a starter. I think they were 14 and two. He had unbelievable his numbers. numbers. He had his numbers that he had seven picks. Ridiculous right. compared to like what, he, what he had last yeah. year. Right. Yeah. So I mean, if he did, and again, no one has like this historically great season. I like think that year. like if, mm -hmm. if everyone had the year they had last year, and Lamar has the year you're talking about, but it's this year, then I think Brock Purdy wins it. I think someone. I think that you know. Again, I'll take that. I'm saying it was Brock Purdy from last year. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. I think they, will, think give they still will give it to. I also think for Mahomes to win a third, his standard is going to be higher than it is for most guys because they are not judging him just against the field. They're judging him against. Well, I've seen Patrick Mahomes do more than that. You know what I mean? Like for Mahomes. Well, he did recalibrate expectations stats? last season, so okay, that's good. This guy's on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I hate to do this on TV. You are uninvited tonight. Wow. It's not going to be fun. Man, I'm not going to enjoy the game. Who's Ravens tonight? Ravens are three-point underdogs as they try to get the revenge on the champs, even though Lamar said it's not really revenge. Here to break it all down is a special week one, game one edition of most to gain, most to lose. We usually save this yeah. for like the NBA Finals or the, the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. But yeah, but this is, kind of, you know. Special day. This, this is interesting. And let me give a little preface before I get into the eight people with the most to gain. Okay. I have learned over the last few years that there might not be a single more influential broadcast on setting the tone for a season than the week one opening night broadcast with Chris Collinsworth and what he focuses That's on. That's actually true. And people are so I'm, – I'm, I'm not – this is a compliment to him and Tariko. And yes. People are so primed and starved for football. It was – a few years ago, Collinsworth created the NHF, not his fault interceptions. We still talk <laughs> about it. Last year, Jawan Taylor's penalties. Now, Jawan w was a highly penalized player, but I think it even primed the refs who were then on the lookout yeah. for it. The fact that he jumped so, every the, single time. The, the, well, that too, but so does Lane Johnson. Nobody yeah, cares. He's not the first And right. so, want to do that. for the most to gain, I tried to think about who do I think Collinsworth is going to point wow, out this is... and take a, you know what I mean, make a big jump. So, coming in at number eight, one of the most important people in the league this year that no one has talked about, Rookie left tackle for the Chiefs, Kingsley Suamataia. So here's what I think is going to happen. Huh. I think in the, in the first quarter, Chris Collinsworth is going to introduce America to him. This is the guy Andy Reid has trusted to protect Patrick Mahomes' yep. blind side. They both went to BYU. They had a first-round grade on him. And, and now listen, he, it could go the other way for him, but if he does well against that Ravens front, then all of a sudden it's like, wow, the Chiefs have their left tackle on a rookie contract. Buy that. Number seven, this one's a little more obvious, Travis Kelsey. Ah. He lit the Ravens on fire in the playoffs last year. They will show those numbers in the broadcast. 11 targets, 11 catches, 116 yards and a touchdown. And keep in mind, he didn't get to play in the banner game last year because he had hurt his knee yeah. right, right before it. So I think he's going to be extra fired up. Kyle Hamilton, Roquan Smith trying to deal with him. He's at number seven. We'll be some Ravens in a moment, but at number six, Xavier Worthy. This is going to be another Chris Collinsworth guy. Let me tell you, Mike, this guy's so fast. It's going to be a lot of that. We're going to see the 40-yard dash time. And if there is just one play, where he breaks it open over the top of the field, oh, that will be oh, uh, absolutely. And by the way, I, bonus prediction, I think his mother makes a cameo on the broadcast oh. when they're talking about him. <laughs> Number five, Zay Flowers, the redemption arc. Mm. You know that we are going to get, certainly in pregame and likely during the game, that the sequence of 
him making the big play to get him in, to, in uh, the, the red zone and then the fumble. Uh, and uh, the broadcast will do what all of media has done, which is pretend the fumble changed the game and not Lamar's interception a few plays <laughs> later. Um, listen, Please and they're going to remind people. Oh, <laughs> uh, listen, Mike. LeJerry Sneed not on the Chiefs anymore yeah, to punch that ball out. Number four, yeah. Yeah. Isaiah Pacheco. Hmm. This will be Sorry. uttered on the broadcast. This is one of the most underrated running backs in all of football. Why don't we talk more about Isaiah Pacheco? And I think Brew is, or Wild, you're on to something. That the Ravens' number one game plan today is going to be, I, I don't care what Roquan Smith said, don't let him beat us over the top. Right. And the running lanes are going to be open. See if Andy takes advantage of it. And if Pacheco can be the most notable back on the field. Because if not, number three, Derrick Henry, he is going to be a featured star of this game. I know the Ravens hope it, certainly of the broadcast, but also.